Hi, it's Kirk, and can you believe it? Yet another episode of Helix Studios today. And in the past, we've talked to some of the guys that have been around for quite a while. Sometimes it's uh, nice to spin the wheel and talk to someone who's brand new with Helix. And today we have Derek Shaw. And all I've seen of you so far, Derek, is your Twitter feed, which is quite interesting. Uh, I noticed some tweets today about the sun. Is there any significance uh, to the glorious autumn sun? shine for you i just love the sun really and i'm from florida so the sun doesn't really ever like go away except at night <laughs> or in <a> hurricane. <laughs> well let's talk about you and the fact you just said you're from florida any uh, any more specific information about where in florida orlando like central florida yeah. So why did you decide that it might be more fun to do some work with helix than say at disney world well, I actually know people who work for, like, Disney World, and, yeah, that kind of stuff is really cute and fun. It's a bit more revealing to work for Helix than it would be for uh, working for Disney World. Let's talk about about you. Uh, I know not much about you, except I did, uh, I know you listened to Spencer Locke's recent podcast. I was trying to be a Yenta and set you guys up, but apparently, apparently unfortunately, that's not going to happen. I thought you guys would be an adorable couple together. We're better friends. That's such a interesting line. We're better friends. All right, but let's talk about you. Uh, so you're from Orlando. Is that where you've lived all your life in Florida? No, wait. I looked at your Twitter feed, and I saw you were in Tokyo. That's quite the juxtaposition from Orlando to Tokyo. How long were you in Japan for? I was only in Japan for about four months. But uh, just I just got to experience a lot while I was out there. What? What? precipitated you going to Japan. Why Why would you uh, end up there for four months? How did that happen? I have a sister that lives over there, and she was like, hey, do you want to come live with me out in Japan for a little while? I was like, sure, why not? So it just flew me out over there, 12-hour flight. That's fantastic. So so how did she end up in Japan? How do you have a sibling that lives uh, in uh, Japan? Oh, she's a, yeah, <laughs> she's a service member. Before I forget, why don't you go ahead and give your Twitter handle if people want to catch up with you? Derek Shaw XXX. Got it. That's pretty simple to remember. It's Derek D E R E K. So, how did you contrast? What is the difference between, besides it being a lot more humid in Orlando, living in Orlando versus visiting in Tokyo? Tokyo was a lot more crowded than Orlando. There was a lot more people I've ever seen in my entire life. And it was honestly just a really eye-opening experience to go to another country and just, like, see different cultures, like, experience new things, try new foods, see gorgeous t different types of men. It's, uh, it was pretty cool. So you saw some hot Japanese guys there. Any, um, any extracurricular fun while you were there with um, some of the uh, local natives there in Japan? I got to hang out with them for a little while, but unfortunately I didn't get to do any fun with them. Let's talk about uh, some of the fun that you've recently had. Your uh, first shoot, it looks like, with Helix took you to Utah. Has has Helix even brought you to Las Vegas yet? Have you seen the uh, Helix headquarters here in uh, Sin City? Well, I haven't seen the Helix quarters yet, but October the 2nd, I'm actually flying out to Las Vegas. Oh, are you really? So that may be even, it's about the time that this podcast drops. So uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing you out here then. That is very exciting. Any idea what the, those scenes will involve when you're uh, here in Vegas? No idea. That'll just keep it mysterious. Now, let's talk about something that seemed a little mysterious is, I guess it's a tie-in with Halloween coming up here, Unromantic Getaway. Now, this was set in Utah. Uh, what did you think of Utah as opposed to, say, Florida or Japan, for that matter? Well, there was a lot of mountains, that is for certain. And there is, I used to think that I kind of lived, like, had some rural areas around me. But yeah, Utah, there's like a lot of nothing for miles and just mountains, which don't get me wrong. It's absolutely beautiful. But like, wow, that is just wilderness out there. It's all like mountains and trees and stuff. We actually went on like a whole like two hour hike to get to Stewart Falls in Utah. And it like took us so long to get back. I bet so. Especially, did you do a seed in there? Did you hike two hours and do a seed? Or is that just to, to take in the elements of uh, Utah? Oh, no. <laughs> that was all recreation. 
All right, well, let's talk about this. I've just seen the trailer for it. I, as we're recording, the scenes haven't dropped yet, but it seems like you're the owner of this luxurious cabin. And will you take it from there? Can you explain what the plot elements are of this? Uh, I assume it's going to be a five-part series about this unromantic getaway. I play the part of this caretaker for this really large cabin, as we know. But um, I kind of like stop in every once in a while. But essentially, it's about this couple that's on like a little getaway to like time for themselves. But one of them doesn't want other people to know about like their relationship. The other partner's friends tracks them down and finds them there and decides to interrupt their whole weekend. And the, all the while, I'm popping in every once in a while. Who uh, were your scenes with for uh, the shoot? My scenes are with Aaron Roberts and uh, Asher Hayes. Now, I've heard nothing but good things about Asher. How was the uh, chemistry with him? Like, we had really great chemistry. We got along really well. We actually were cracking up some jokes in between sets and stuff. But, yeah, honestly, like, we're better. We're good friends. Like, a lot of people say, like, oh, why you get to? like, I'm pretty sure he has a boyfriend already. Ah. Uh, we're good friends. I looked at your Twitter feed, and, and oh, my gosh, those shots, and they weren't. They were like uh, safe for work shots. I didn't go deep enough. I, I haven't found any uh, not safe for work shots on your Twitter feed. Are, are there any there, or can fans expect to see some in the future? Or what's the story here, Derek? Well, I've decided to not give it all away all at once. So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna let it simmer down and let people see. I saw one post that say, I got the job. Now, I assume that wasn't the Helix job. I mean, you heard the interview I did with uh, Spencer Locke. He's incredibly busy working a full-time job, then has a carve-out to do his part-time erotic job with Helix. What job did you get? I got a job as a medical assistant. Did you really? Congratulate. Be careful. You're, you're fully vaxxed, I'm sure. Yes, I am. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about you personally. That's what a lot of people want to know. We didn't even find out, you know, how old you are. How, how, you've got that all-American look, too. How old are you, uh, Derek? I'm 21. <laughs> Uh, 21. Okay. So uh, what made you decide, you know, you've got, I'm sure you chatted with Spencer. He like was chomping at the bit right when he turned 18 to get started. And if you haven't heard his interesting adventure of his first shoot, be sure to check out his uh, podcast. What made you decide to apply to Helix and uh, go on this journey? Honestly, it's so funny. Um, the story of how I applied. I was just sitting in my room bored one night and I was like, well, because before I worked as a medical assistant, I was working fast food. I was like, wow, I'm so bored. Like, what if I just apply? And so I, like, I just took, like, some selfies with me, like, completely naked. And I went and applied, and I sent the email. And then 30 days later, I get an email saying, like, hey, do you want to come to Utah? <laughs> hey, why not? Why not? And Derek, by the way, ha have you looked in the mirror? Why, why wouldn't they get back? You, I normally don't notice eye colors, but you have some of the most striking brown eyes of almost any person I've ever seen. Have other people mentioned that to you? Every once in a while, I get someone that mentions them. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, you are. You have got a tremendous look. And I saw you post the, here again on Twitter about getting stronger at the gym. Some of the guys work out a lot, some not many, some in between, not often. How often do you hit the gym? It, the, the body like yours can't just come naturally, can it? I try to go to the gym like six days out of the week, and I go for two hours minimum. Do you consider yourself gay or do you consider yourself bi? I consider myself bi because there's like, there's someone, there's a, there's a woman I have a crush on, but there's mm -hmm. also like guys I have crushes on too. I mean, my gosh, when you were working fast food, uh, how did you keep the women from, from hitting on you and the men for that matter, hitting on you all day long at the restaurant? <laughs> um, I wore my mask a lot. <laughs> What a transition from working fast food, now a medical assistant, to working Helix. Do you have kind of a similar arrangement that Spencer does where they know at your new position that every once in a while you're just going to have to vanish for a few days? Yeah, that's actually really funny um, because before I went to that interview, I listened to the podcast with Spencer, Spencer's podcast, and he was talking about the word contracted. So I was like, oh, I can just say that. So I actually told the woman interviewing me that I had contracted work. 
How was it during that first scene? Is that your first uh, adventure into uh, gay adult entertainment, or had you done anything before? Honestly, that was the first ever adult film that I was ever in in my entire life. Well, from what I gather from talking to Spencer, who's also in that, you're primarily a top, is that correct? That's correct. Wow. Well, you you kind of play the guy who is almost, at least from the trailer, a little subdued compared to the other cast members in this uh, in this five part adventure that we've got. Because you're kind of the guy that lives there out in the country. How would you describe your role? My role, I was like a little confused at first. I was like, "Oh, a country boy." I was like, "Do I have to like fake an accent?" Because I'm from the country myself. Like, I grew up kind of in rural areas. But thankfully, I got explained to me, and so I was just like, okay, cool. So I just kind of like read through the script. It was super easy. I kind of like, I was, I was like staying up at night, like reading it over before my scene the next day. My character in this movie, he plays kind of almost like a simp. Like he's like a huge simp for like any like cute guy that like shows him affection in this movie, I believe. So how are you feeling? Because, you know, the top, you got a, well, you got a top. Uh, how were you anxious for the scenes or did it once start happening, it just kind of flowed and come together? And you've got, of course, Alex there, who has been referred to as the porn ninja getting these shots. So he's doing a pretty good job making you feel comfortable there. But were you? How was your feelings and emotions shooting this scene? I was, like, literally shaking. Like, you could, you could probably see it, like, like the on the unofficial cameras, but like you could probably see like I was like so nervous. My face was um very like red in a lot of them because I was just so shy because I had never been filmed before. Yeah, usually I don't tend to get around a lot, so the fact that there was like a whole there was like multiple people in the room, I was so nervous the whole time. If they're having you back here to uh, Las Vegas, I know that you uh, did an amazing job. What was it when it was happening? Were you aware of the cameras or are you just getting into the scene with Aaron and Asher when it was uh, taking place? What was it like when it was actually happening? I was kind of like going into the mindset of like, if I was in this situation, if I was like alone with a cute guy, in this huge, like, beautiful cabin out in the middle of nowhere. Like, okay, yeah, I'd get into it, too. <laughs> That's <laughs> kind of like my mindset was. I was zeroing in. Tell me about your backstory. When did you realize you weren't straight? You were at least bi or interested in guys? Did you have your first experiences with a girl, or was it with a, a young man? How did that all play out for you? My experience when I realized I was gay Whenever like, I was a kid, my parents kind of realized that I was a bit different from my other brothers because they're like, wow, he's putting like leaves and stuff on his head and he's playing with animals instead of playing soccer and stuff. I would like, yeah, <laughs> I kind of like really veered towards more of the girly stuff. And I, I would like crush on girls. But, like I would also get like really nervous and shy around like guys that I thought were cute. Like years later, as I was a teenager, I'd be like, Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm straight. Trust me. I just um, get a boner every single time a cute guy walks by me. But I'm straight, though. And I was honestly trying to convince myself. But um, when I was 18, I was the first time I ever had sex. And honestly, like that was a trip because that happened at Legoland. Now, was that with sex with a, with a guy or with a girl then when you were 18? Oh, that was a guy. Have you had sex with women or has it been so far strictly with guys? So far, men, but I'm open for women because I've heard lots of things about vaginas. Well, good luck. Good luck to you on that. So how was that first experience when you were 18? Because a lot of times, whether it's straight or gay or something in between, that first experience can be pretty nerve-wracking. Was the first experience uh, of having sex when you were 18, was that more stressful or was it more anxious to do the first scene with Helix? The first scene of Helix was more anxious because there was, like, cameras on me and everything. Like, if I were to mess up or something like that, like, I was worrying, like, oh, what if we have to retake it or something like that. Yeah, the first time I had um, sex, it just kind of, like, came naturally. But there was That's a dog the howling outside the door, the bedroom door, the <laughs> whole time, when I, the first time I was having sex. So that kind of threw me off. 
Oh, that would have been good cover. Cover to have the uh, the dog out there. As a top, one of the things that I would worry about, especially starting out with the anxiousness and the drama and the excitement, you didn't you don't have to, you didn't come too soon. Did you take any precautions to make sure you didn't come too soon with these two hot guys? I have a lot of sexual endurance. Like I can go for hours. From just the photos, a tremendous amount of sexual charisma and energy. You look like the all-American guy with just a little bit of that naughty side. When you look in the mirror, do you realize just how hot you are? Or do you see little things that you want to improve? Or maybe a combination? There is a combination because I feel as though everyone, everyone should always be improving themselves physically, mentally, emotionally, all that kind of stuff. But... I look at myself and you know, I'd be like, you know what? If there was no improvement past this, like that wouldn't be the worst thing. But like, I would love to get like, you know, a little like wider shoulders or like maybe like refined abs. But it's nothing I'm insecure about. You're blessed. You're blessed, and I just want young people like yourself to know how blessed you are to have that look. And I think it is so great that you're sharing that with so many people, so that they can better appreciate who they are and understand their sexuality. Because, like you say, when you were growing up as a teenager, you're like, "Oh no, I'm straight. I'm completely straight." I think many, many, in fact, maybe most gay men, especially older gay men, went through that. That, oh no, I'm straight. And then to see somebody hot, somebody desirable like you, it really actually helps a lot of people, both men and women for that matter. Thank you. Derek, it has been so nice chatting with you. Before we go, what are your plans? So after this first experience, uh, were you pretty pleased with the way things went with Helix? You think you'll be staying with uh, Helix for at least some time to come? I plan on staying with Helix for a long time. All right, well, we are so looking forward to seeing you uh, here very soon here in Las Vegas by October. It's cooled down, too. Oh, I just want to admit, how did your parents and siblings react? You remember you mentioned you had brothers. So how did they react, or do they not yet know that you have been enjoying the world of Helix? <laughs> well, with my mom finding out, my mom was like, oh, my God, Derek, please don't do it. But I'm going to drive you to the airport anyway. <laughs> 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 How about your siblings? Do they know yet, or are you just going to send them a link, maybe, to the first scene? <laughs> I hope not. Um, my sister knows. She's like, don't do that again. But physically, I can't stop you, so do whatever. Most of my, yeah, my siblings don't really care. Or, yeah, they just don't really care. <laughs> Derek, it has been so great to speak with you. And uh, anything else you'd like to add as we wrap up here? Um, no, I'm just, thank you very much for having me.